Coming up on this special edition of Access Virginia Beach, from being named the best run city in America to Hurricane Sandy devastating the East Coast. Today, we'll take a look back through the year and celebrate the highs and lows of 2012. That and more coming up as we access Virginia Beach. Hello and welcome to VBTV's Access Virginia Beach. I'm Stephanie Sutton. Thanks for joining us for this special edition where we take a look back at the top stories of 2012. We kick off the show with one of the nation's biggest storms to hit the East Coast. Back in October, Superstorm Sandy swept up the Atlantic coast, leaving millions without power and wrecking coastal cities. Let's take a look back at how Virginia Beach fared. Georgine Jones has that story. High winds and strong rain pelted the area for more than two days. Rain um, for Virginia Beach averaged anywhere between six and nine inches. We had quite a bit of rain. Um, being, the, being on the coast. Um, wind, um, we kind of averaged around 30, 40 mile an hour at the peak um, with some gusts in 50s and 60s. According to Virginia Dominion Power, Sandy caused more than 80,000 outages in Hampton Roads in North Carolina. Luckily, city officials say there were no reports of major problems. We had very few trees down. Um, you know, lots of branches kind of shaking the canopy. We did see flooding. Um, we have some neighborhoods that have sustained some, some pretty good flooding. The Little Island Fishing Pier in Sandbridge experienced the wrath of Sandy. Several sections were destroyed. Buildings on the property had siding ripped off and the picnic areas saw lots of flooding. At the oceanfront, crews were busy moving sand out and assessing damage at Gromit Island Park. We had moderate to, to significant beach erosion with this, so it pushed a lot of sand. Um, with Gromit Island, brought a lot of debris up on the beach, which is what Public Works is working on right now. The Lesnar Bridge Marina area also took a hit. The parking lot and picnic areas were destroyed. The city kept citizens safe before, during, and after the storm by activating the Emergency Operations Center, opening up an emergency shelter, and deploying crews for cleanup. Another big story from 2012, the elections. Months of campaigning finally came to an end on November 6th as voters packed the polls. And the results? President Barack Obama was re-elected to a second term as the President of the United States. Once again, here's Access reporter Georgine Jones with more. Cloudy skies and cold temperatures didn't keep the voters away in Virginia Beach as tens of thousands turned out to cast their ballots. I have one, one. Even though long lines were seen around the city, things ran smoothly as citizens made their decisions. Thanks for voting. Thank you. William Sessoms continues his service as the city's mayor, but city council saw some changes. Amelia Ross Hammond takes over the Kempsville district while Rosemary Wilson, Bob Dyer, and Glenn Davis were re-elected. For school board elections, a multitude of candidates were competing for six seats. And once the votes were tallied, a few new faces were appointed. Joel McDonald takes over the Rose Hall seat, while Leonard Tenko took the Centerville seat. Voters chose Beverly Anderson and Betsy Taylor for the at-large seat. Dan Edwards returns to office on the Kempsville seat. A special election was held to fill an at-large seat vacated by a member who resigned. Robert Malati was elected to that spot. More than 60% of voters voted yes on the light rail referendum. Virginia election officials say that statewide turnout met or exceeded that of the 2008 presidential election. Of course, we can't ring in the new year without celebrating the 2012 accomplishments of the city and school division. And boy, that list is a long one. Let's take a look at some of the highlights. Virginia Beach was named the best run city in America by 24-7 Wall Street. TripAdvisor also rated the resort city one of America's 10 best beach destinations. We had a record year for tourism, and the city maintained the region's lowest tax rates for real estate and personal property. And the school division also had its share of good news. Ten Virginia Beach high schools were ranked among the nation's best. Dr. James Merrill was named Virginia Superintendent of the Year, and the division was also named to the third annual AP District Honor Roll by the College Board. Along with those accomplishments, the school division also celebrated some new beginnings. 
including the opening of the new Great Neck Middle School. Access reporter Veronica Coleman has the details. We are Great Neck. We there was definitely a lot great to cheer about at Great Neck Middle School. It is my honor to welcome you all here today to dedicate the building we have called home for the past 11 months. School officials, students, and staff gather to dedicate the new school. We uh, have been in our building 11 months, but we now had our formal dedication. We uh, celebrated our entry into this building almost one year ago, just short of one year ago. And uh, this is the school board's dedication, a more formal uh, ceremony to acknowledge uh, the folks who were responsible for this and to celebrate the uh, fine things that we've taken on in this building. The three-story building boasts large hallways, a production studio, a rooftop rain garden, classrooms stocked with technology, and much more. There's a state-of-the-art media center complete with direct access to computer labs, new guidance suites, special education classrooms as well as an art room that has direct access to the school's courtyard. The facility helps prepare students for 21st century learning. This building is designed for student achievement from one end to the other. It is one of the most modern schools within the division and region, and it is noted for its high standards of sustainability. 2012 also saw the grand opening of one of the most highly anticipated recreation centers in the region, the Williams Farm Recreation Center. Georgine Jones covered that story. That fun began with a ribbon cutting ceremony featuring the namesake of the building. They asked me to say a few words that we had a tour of this facility just a few minutes ago. And one word comes to mind very quickly. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's a dandy. One, two, three. Nestled in the heart of Western Bayside, the city's newest building drew a huge crowd. Today we're celebrating the grand opening of the Williams Farm Community Recreation Center. Got a lot of activities going on. Indeed they did. Shots were made, bodies were moving, laps were run, iron was pumped, legs were burning. And there was even some break dancing going on. And don't forget about those falls. From bad ones off the wheels to happy ones as daredevils conquered the 150-foot slide into the pool. Smiles seemed to be contagious, especially in the spacious weight and fitness room. This weight room has the very latest in equipment. Uh, each of the um, recumbent bikes and the stair steppers and the treadmills have their individual monitors in addition to be able to listen to your own music and watch your own television uh, while you're uh, recreating. You can also track your own fitness program um, in a very detailed way to see how you're progressing fitness-wise. And working out was on the minds of these patrons. So provide good weights, get your strength up, get your body right, and very, very good equipment. Eddie Piles lives near the center. He says it's convenient and is the best thing that has ever happened to this neighborhood. Oh, it's going to uh, provide me a lot of uh, self-confidence. Uh, uh, makes me feel a lot better working out. Um, and just give me a better attitude on life. Staff is on hand to assist and provide information on keeping you healthy. Uh, behind me, we have a patron who is using one of our AMT cardiovascular machines. Um, she's breaking a hard sweat. And if you also look to my immediate right, we have uh, participants walking around the track. The track is a tenth of a mile, so that means that 10 laps around the track will be a mile. The 71,000 square foot facility is Silver LEED certified and contains many new features not found in other city rec centers, like this state-of-the-art skate and bike park. It's a 25,000 square foot concrete skate park that features a tiered bowl, flow park, and urban skate plaza. The skate park is our most dynamic of the three uh, skate parks. It was design-build, so that means that the uh, team, design-build team out of Florida was able to uh, kind of design and build as they go and we're able to be much more creative uh, with building the skate park. It's right at a half an acre and people are taking full advantage of it. For membership details, log on to vbgov.com backslash parks. Coming up next on our look back at Virginia Beach in 2012, an Olympic hero makes a special stop in the resort city. We'll bring you the details. And not to be outdone, Tallwood High School hosts their own special visitor. We'll have that and more when we return.
Virginia Beach Schools Parent Connection is your one-stop resource for information and events which support families and promote student success. Parents, concerned about bullying and the painful impact it can have on your child? Do you know the warning signs that your child may be the victim of bullying or even a bully? Plan to attend the Parent Connection Anti-Bullying Workshop at Lanstown Middle School on January 17th, 7 to 9 p.m. The Office of Guidance Services will have tips to help your child deal appropriately with bullying and information about the programs and measures in place at schools. You will also learn how to work with your child's guidance counselor and teachers to make your child's peer relationships positive ones. The workshop is free, but registration is requested by calling 263-1936. Does someone in your house receive an iPad or tablet this holiday season? Join the students at the Advanced Technology Center for the Parent Connection Technology Academy iPad Tips and Tricks on Wednesday, January 23rd from 7 to 9 p.m. You will walk away with more skills than basic web searching and playing games. Register to attend this free session by calling 263-1936 and be sure to bring your iPad to the class. It seems as if everyone is having trouble making ends meet during these challenging economic times. Join the Parent Connection for a free workshop focused on money matters. It all adds up. Financial literacy for parents and students will be led by Virginia Beach Schools Federal Credit Union. This free workshop will take place on Thursday, January 24th at Lansdowne High School from 7 to 9 p.m. Topics include creating savings and spending plans, managing your credit, house car purchases, good loans versus bad loans, and online banking. Call 263-1936 to register. And remember, a complete calendar of Parent Connection events is available on the Division's website at vbschools.com. Welcome back to this special edition of Access Virginia Beach. I'm Stephanie Sutton. One of the highlights from 2012 was the Summer Olympics, and one of the biggest athletes from the competition was Gabby Douglas. She won a gold medal in both the individual and team all-around competitions, and she was born in Newport News and grew up right here in Virginia Beach. Medals aren't made out of gold. They're made out of blood, sweat, and tears, basically. All the hard work and sacrifice is put into this medal. Olympic champion Gabby Douglas was back in town to show off her hardware and celebrate her success. Fans welcomed her with open arms. Hundreds gathered at the 31st Street Park to catch a glimpse of Douglas, who was as happy to see everyone here as they were to see her. It makes me feel so honored and knowing that the Virginia Beach and Hampton Roads and just everyone is just supporting me and loving me and just, I have this community behind my back. It's just so honoring. Whereas Gabby not only made her hometown extremely proud, she won the hearts of fellow Americans. The mayor honored Gabby with a special proclamation and a key to the city. She even got a chance to ride front and center in the Neptune Festival Parade. Congratulations on your, all of your success. She hopes her determination and sacrifice are an inspiration to all athletes. I would advise them if you love a sport or just anything really, just stick with it and never quit, never give up. And that mantra obviously worked for Douglas. She is the first African-American gymnast in Olympic history to become the individual all-around champion. Congratulations to Gabby. And while he wasn't an Olympic hero, he is the Vice President of the United States, and he did make a special appearance at Tallwood High School's graduation ceremonies back in May. Access reporter Veronica Coleman has that story. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the 47th Vice President of the United States. Tallwood High was the lucky school as Vice President Joe Biden delivered his address before a sea of purple-colored caps and gowns. The Vice President thanked the area's military families, spoke of the greatness of America, and the potential of today's teenagers. Class of 2012, you're going to live through a period of the most remarkable and rapid technological, scientific, and medical breakthroughs in the history of mankind. And we, you, are going to lead those changes from the United States of America. More than 460 seniors graduated from Tallwood High School as a crowd of friends and family cheered them on. The class of 2012 was awarded the highest amount of scholarship money ever. More than $32 million in scholarships went to graduating seniors. While Olympic heroes and folks from the presidential cabinet are pretty impressive, their city of Virginia Beach also has some great citizens that do some pretty amazing things, like the two ladies you'll meet in this next story. Access reporting Mickey Acedo brings us the details. And when we 
What does this cheerful looking room and this gruesome looking injury have in common? While one may make you a little queasy to look at, they both are making a difference in the community. This is my room where I talk with kids. It's only a talking room. Would you like to have a seat? Meet Detective Jaluso. She's been with the police department for more than eight years, and thanks to her idea, the department now has a child-friendly interview room. I'm very happy. I'm very happy that it's here. Um, I'm just excited to bring children finally to a room that is their room for them, and it's also separate from the police department, so they're not feeling intimidated and overwhelmed when they walk over there. It's very scary when a child witnesses or becomes a victim of a crime, but Detective Jaluso is making it a little easier by offering this safe, say? comfortable interview room. It's okay to talk about anything at all because kids don't get in trouble with me in this room, okay? The department like began using it in September of 2011, and it continues to bring a little bit of peace during difficult times. It shows them that, you know, we do care about them, and we are a department that is striving to, you know, address the, the children of our community and their needs. As it dries a little bit, you're going to have some coagulated blood. But then you're now, let's go back to that scary-looking injury. How does this make a difference? Hey, hi, I'm Kathy Booty. I'm a volunteer with Virginia Beach EMS. Um, I've got moulage kit here that we use to do pretend wounds. Kathy is getting her hands dirty, all in the name of helping out students training for Virginia Beach's emergency medical services. When they're in class, uh, they don't really have wounds to look at until toward the end when they get closer to the exams. And then because they're going to be out on the street and actually see injuries, we try to give, these are the mock injuries. So it, it sort of gives them an idea of what they're actually going to see. From bruises to burns and even bleeding. Now you've got an impaled object. Kathy's moulage simulates what students will see once they hit the streets. She has been volunteering for EMS for more than 17 years. Now, while Detective Jaluso's and Kathy Booty's actions probably won't make the front page news, their hard work is not going unnoticed. Here is your award for the Virginia Beach Public Safety Employee of the Year. Thank you. We applaud you. Thank you so much. In fact, the Rotary Club of Cape Henry has named Kathy as the Public Safety Volunteer of the Year and Detective Jaluso as the Public Safety Employee of the Year. We all live in Virginia Beach. We all play in Virginia Beach. We work you know, in the area, and it's very important to us to honor those people who are serving our community on a daily basis. And the giving continues. Access reporter Mickey Acedo introduces you to a young man who is making a difference in the quality of water in our rivers and the ocean they feed into. On a quiet summer morning just off the banks of the Lynn Haven River, in a stone's throw from town center, James Hemphill and some members of the Project Green team are getting ready for the day's work. So right now we're sorting through, measuring, and um, taking data from an oyster float, which is a, kind of a way to regrow oysters, which historically have been filling the Lynn Haven in their important filter and habitat in this area. Growing oysters and improving the area waterways has landed James an impressive national award. He's a junior ocean hero. So the award is the Oceania Ocean Heroes Award, and that award is for actions pertaining to the environment, especially that ones that help the ocean. So my work with the oceans, including oyster restoration, Project Green Teens, working with businesses to reduce plastic bags, all of that accumulated and made it so I could be a nominee and eventually win the award. These Green Teen members find and work on projects that make a difference in our parks, neighborhoods, and waterways, like this oyster restoration float. So the first part is building the um, Taylor float, which is a rectangle PVC pipe of uh, maybe three inch diameter and then having a basket oh, under it and then you have the oysters in this bag right here which kind of holds them and keeps predators out hey, Mike, you you and you put in yeah, about yeah. 1,000 baby oysters in the bag they'll start out about one millimeter long and then after a year they're almost three inches 
The green teens have also dived into dumpsters at Lynn Haven Middle, removed 2,300 pounds of trash in several beach cleanups, and their latest project has them working with grocery stores to reduce plastic bag consumption in Virginia Beach. So, how can you get involved? Well, for someone who's trying to start their own project, start out small. Find a river or creek near where you live that's easily accessible and polluted. And really, that's an area where you can see the physical impact. If you start out by just conserving the ocean, you'll never be able to see the impact of your work. But by conserving a river or a creek, it's affecting the ocean, but you'll be able to see the effect of your work. And as you can see, future career plans look bright for this young hero. I'm not really sure. I definitely want to work with the environment, um, maybe public policy, maybe working with other foundations like the Chesapeake Bay Foundation or starting my own. But um, it's definitely something with the environment and water that's my first love. If you'd like to get involved, log on to vbgov.com and enter Project Green Teen into the search field. Coming up next in our look back at Virginia Beach in 2012, the police department honors the first African-American officers. We'll take you there. Plus, a new law cracks down on drunk drivers. We'll have that and more when we return. Welcome back to this special edition of Access Virginia Beach. I'm Stephanie Sutton. During the turbulent 1960s, racism was prevalent throughout the country, yet many black law enforcement officers stood brave during a time when race relations were tense. Reporter Peter Van Hees brings us the story. Well, first off, uh, I was afraid. <laughs> Former police officer John Parks because, was one uh, of those officers. He joined the Virginia Beach Police Department back in 1966. I was a new kid on the block. I was probably the first black police officer they hired in 10, 15, 20 years or whatever. To honor Parks and dozens of other black law enforcement officers that patrolled Virginia Beach during a difficult time, the city held a special celebration at the second precinct. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Black Law Enforcement Pioneers Ceremony. The ceremony celebrated the historical accomplishments of officers who blazed the path for the city and the police department. Twenty-three auxiliary officers were also honored for their service. Ralph Jordan was one of them. He worked in the force for 14 years. It was a lot of fun in a way and a little scary sometimes too. Their service is no longer going unnoticed and family members couldn't be more proud. He would be very, very proud because he was pr proud, very proud to be a, a police officer. And I think uh, the city doing this for my father and the other policemen is significant because we still continue to need role models, particularly in the police force. John Parks feels the same way. He helped pave the way for other black officers, and today he's glad they've all finally been recognized. I'm still pinching myself. I cannot believe it. I don't think any of the other guys would ever believe it. You know? I, uh, I, I keep saying when I go to the Great Beyond, that's the first thing I want to do is find uh, 
Charlie Pace and Sparrow and and uh, Lawrence and all the rest of the officers that I worked with and tell them that we had this day. 31 officers were honored for their service during the ceremony. 245, that's the number of people who were killed in alcohol-related road deaths in the state of Virginia last year alone. Lawmakers are hoping to drastically cut down that number in 2013 with new legislation. Georgine Jones reported on the new law that went into effect last July. I think uh, we can do better, and uh, this legislation is a statement by the General Assembly that we will do better. To help prevent the needless loss of lives, Governor Bob McDonald made a special stop at the Virginia Beach Fire and EMS Training Center, signing a new law that will crack down on drunk drivers. One of the bills uh, that occasionally get to sign that will make a huge difference for Virginia and literally saves people's lives. As of July 1st, the new law requires all convicted drunk drivers to purchase and use an ignition interlock device. Currently, it's only second offenders or people with very high BACs, like twice the legal limit. But now the message is, if you drive drunk in Virginia, you're going to go to jail, you're going to lose your license, and you're not going to get back in a car unless you have an ignition interlock system on the car, which means you can't operate the car unless you blow into a pipe and uh, prove that you don't have any alcohol in, in your system. Kay Walsh's daughter was killed by a repeat offender seven years ago. Since then, she's worked hard to help make this law a reality. Common words can't express what this means to me personally, because to me, I've done something for my daughter. This means a great deal to me, because I feel like I'm, I'm carrying her memory on in a positive way. Hopefully the new law will have a profound impact on public safety. States that have passed similar laws saw a 50% reduction in their DUI fatality rate. 2012 was a productive year. It marked the grand opening of a middle school, a recreation center, a new law enforcement memorial, and many more important projects, including Pleasure House Point. Last July, the city finally succeeded in preserving the land. Here's Mickey Aceto with more. This is one of the most breathtaking spots in all of Virginia Beach. And now it is ours. Hundreds gathered along the Lynn Haven River to celebrate the dedication of Pleasure House Point and to thank those who helped preserve it. Thank you for saving Pleasure House Point. <laughs> Located just west of the Lesner Bridge, it is the last major piece of undeveloped land on the Lynn Haven River and has been a top priority for open space preservation for more than a decade. This project is a partnership of the City of Virginia Beach, the Trust for Public Land, and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. So for years, this community and those three partners have been working to protect this parcel. And today we officially open it as a natural area, the City of Virginia Beach natural area. And Chesapeake Bay Foundation will also be doing environmental education on the site in the future. The property was originally considered for a large waterfront development. But thanks to funding, help from multiple organizations, and support from the community, they were able to purchase this 118-acre tract of land and preserve it for future generations. I came down and I visited the site and I fell in love with it and then I heard how passionate the community was about preserving this property. So I knew we had to get involved. Uh, Dominion Resources and uh, the Dominion Foundation are extremely pleased that our 500,000 donation has gone towards uh, allowing this beautiful area to be preserved. The property, which boasts informal hiking trails, fishing areas, non-motorized water access, and a parking area along Marlin Bay, is free and open for the public to enjoy. This 118-acre uh, natural area is for them. They, uh, they're going to access it um, with a thoughtful stewardship in mind. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation also plans to build an environmental education center on a small portion of the site. The entrance to the Pleasure House Point Natural Area is located at 3957 Marlin Bay Drive. And with that, we've come to the end of our show. But if you've missed something, you can view this program online. Log on to vbgov.com backslash eStream, then find and click on Access Virginia Beach. We leave you now with some photos of the Animal Care and Adoption Center's birthday bash. Back in December, they celebrated their one-year anniversary in their new building. For everyone here at VBTV, I'm Stephanie Sutton. Thanks for watching, and we wish you the best for 2013.